Hi, my name is Beth and I'm a sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today's video is a sewing tutorial that's going to use your fabric scraps and make a great holiday gift. We're going to be making a little flower tote. These totes are great if you're going to the farmer's market and don't want to wrap your flowers in plastic and they also make a really great gift wrap. So if you're going to someone's house and need a hostess gift or for Thanksgiving, or even if you're just going to leave some flowers on their doorstep, as we're all being safe and social distancing, this is a great way to wrap the flowers, make them extra special, and then also give your friend or family member something that they can use and reuse after the lifespan of the flowers. This is a really easy and unique little tote to make. It's lined so you can have a nice little pop of extra color. You can choose whether you wanna make your own strap like I did for this tote, or if you wanna use just a pre-purchased ribbon. Let's get started. I'm making a medium sized flower tote. So I have cut two pieces of fabric that are 16 inches square. My blue is going to be the lining and the brown is going to be the exterior. It's really nice to have contrasting fabric because it looks pretty once it's all done and you can see that lining fabric. So to start out, fold your fabric on the diagonal and we're going to stitch along one of these raw edges. I will put in a few pins to hold it. And do the same thing with each piece of fabric. Okay, let's take these over to the sewing machine. I'm using a one half inch seam allowance and a straight stitch, and I'm just gonna stitch all the way down this edge. So that's the lining. Set that aside, and now do the same for the body of the tote. Okay, let's head over to the pressing station. Here I am, I have my sleeve board, which will help me get into the seam. And I'm just going to press the seams open. And it's kind of hard to get down to this point, but that's okay. What we wanna do is arrange our fabric so that the seam is centered in the middle of our cone and then press it down. And then grab your ruler. You wanna find the point where there's one inch on either side of that center seam. So mine is right here and I'm just gonna use my washable fabric marker and draw a line. Going to hold this in place with a pin and then I'm gonna take this over to the machine and stitch right along that line. And I will do the same thing for my outer fabric. All right, I have my machine set up with a straight stitch and I'm going to stitch right along that line that I drew. And this is just going to square up the bottom of the comb. Do a back stitch at the beginning and end. And we'll repeat for this other side. Now we're just going to cut off this little corner of fabric and leave about a quarter of an inch. We'll do it with the lining. So while we're here at the machine, I'm going to turn my outer fabric right side out. With my fingers, I'll push open that bottom corner. And then I'm going to take my lining fabric, and this is still wrong side out, and put it inside my outer fabric. So now we really see the cone with the lining inside. And then I'm going to line up the center seam and the lining and the outer fabric. Put a pin in here and then just go all the way around and line up the raw edges and pin it together. And make sure you get this corner lined up 
These should just line up pretty exactly. Okay, now I'm going to change my machine to a basting stitch. So a basting stitch is just a long stitch and I'm going to stitch around at one half inch. Now I'm going to trim my lining fabric close to that basted stitching. And this is just going to reduce the bulk in our little flower tote. So just go all the way around, trim that so that you just have a little bit left next to the basting stitches. And then I will meet you back over at the pressing station. Now we wanna fold in and hem the opening edge of our little tote. So you wanna first fold in one half inch right along that line that you basted and you'll do that all the way around and then fold it again one half inch and press again. And I will come back and fold in this edge later. But right now, I'm going to get ready to sew a miter corner. And I'm just gonna show this to you really quickly because I did a video last week about sewing mitered corners. And this is the same technique. So all you do is you open the first fold only, grab your ruler, and then we'll mark one inch from the end of each corner. Make sure you only unfold your second fold. And then connect these two lines, and then you will fold this right sides together and stitch along that line. Trim the corner away, and then come back and press everything down. Magic of video. I've already done this one and that technique creates a really nice mitered corner. For more details on this, I will put a link here to my other video about making napkins. So you wanna get it pressed all the way around to conceal that raw edge and then we'll go back to the machine and top stitch. Now we're going to stitch down this hem. I have my machine set up with matching thread and I'll be using a straight stitch. I like to start kind of in the middle. I'm going to try to line my needle up about an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge. Okay, and then I just wanna go right over the top of where I stitched before and do a little back stitch. All right, that is all top stitched and we are ready to sew on our straps. First, I'm gonna stitch on the little handle that would go over your shoulder. And I have just centered this on either side of the bag. And this is a purchased ribbon and I've cut it about 30 inches long and then pinned it with it folded over so that the raw edge will be enclosed. And I'm just going to stitch a little box right around and then stitch an X. I removed kind of the bed of my sewing machine so I'll have better access to this area and won't uh, risk stitching over a part that I don't want to. So I'll just slide my tote over my machine. And if your machine doesn't have a removable area like this, you can put your bag inside out and that will give you easier access. Okay, I've also changed my thread so it's white and matches my little strap. And I'm still just using a straight stitch. Okay, now I'm at the end. I know it's been a lot of pivoting. I'm just gonna do a little back stitch. Okay, and there we have it, a nice little box with an X in the middle, and this will be really secure. Go ahead and stitch the other side down. And then I've also pinned a piece of ribbon to the back of the flower tote. And I've put this about six inches from the bottom and just centered on the back. And again here, I'm just gonna stitch a little square to stitch this in place. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit trickier because my bag isn't really big enough to go over the top of this arm. So I've turned it inside out 
and I'm just going to carefully stitch around and try not to stitch on any part that shouldn't be stitched through. So I'm only stitching the back layer of the bag and my ribbon. All right, we're all done. Well, I hope that you enjoyed making this little reusable flower tote. This is the third video in my series of scrap busting gifts that you can sew. The first one is for miter corner napkins, and the second one is for a 3D style face mask. If you're interested in more sustainable projects and ways to use your scraps, I have a newsletter that's all about sustainability, and it's going to be the best way to find out about my upcoming e-course that's all about improvisational quilting, and it will teach you how to take your fabric scraps and turn them into really beautiful improvisational quilts. I'll put a link down in the show notes to sign up for that newsletter. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support the channel, I invite you to go visit my PDF pattern shop. I'll put a link to that down in the show notes as well. And stay tuned to the channel because I'm going to be bringing a few more videos that will be scrap busting and giftable. Happy sewing!